Um, okay. I just want to thank, before I start, I want to thank our Father God, Holy Spirit, and Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. For everything that he has done for me, and everything he is doing, and everything he will be doing for all of us. And it is a blessing and it's a miracle that I get to sit here today with my mom and dad. And I want to honor this service to you. Because as a part of the Ten Commandments, I haven't done a great job honoring you. Guys, as I was growing up as a teenager and all that. <laughs> um, but I do. I, I want to dedicate this service to my mom and dad who have raised me to be the woman I am today and who've really rooted me in my Jewish roots that I'm coming back to today. Um, I, w I was raised traditional, uh, Persian Jewish, in a Persian Jewish home. Um, and, you know, I, I would get in trouble if I missed Shabbat Friday nights. <laughs> my dad made that sure that it's very important. And um, I didn't do a good job of keeping that. And I could go on and on and on and tell you how many rebellious things I've done um, that came to the point of my salvation. But um, what I, okay, so you're probably wondering why am I here having an adult bar mitzvah? What happened? Well, I studied Hebrew when I was studying for my bar mitzvah when I was a teenager. I just never completed it. I just went to the party. <laughs> I just had a party, and I didn't ever do the ritual, or the ceremony. I didn't do what I'm doing today. And you know, I was thinking on this, and it's, it's, it's so amazing how the Lord will always bring things back together for his glory. I never thought that I would ever, ever have a bat mitzvah. I mean, that, that time was so past, and it's not something that I was even thinking about. But once I got saved, about six months ago, he brought me into Messianic Judaism. I didn't even know what Messianic Judaism was. And he brought me here and into my family, in, into my family of Messianic family. It's been beyond mind-blowing and beyond exponentially gr like growing me in him, in my walk and journey as a new believer. But most importantly, he brought me back to my Jewish roots, which I never, ever thought. I mean, I'll tell you in a moment what happened, <laughs> but I was far away from my Jewish roots. I rebelled very bad. And... It's, it's, it's the theme that I felt with everything that you heard in scripture, all the profound scripture in both the Old and New Testament, is obedience. That was the, the word that stood out for me, because I was, if anything, very, I was just very disobedient growing up. And, you know, I, now that I'm getting bought mitzvah as an adult, um, I mean, I, I would lie and say <laughs> I'm 13, but I'm not. Even, <laughs> but um, <laughs> even though I could look older, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't want to break a commandment right now. <laughs> We're not starting off like breaking the commandment. But um, I do. I did feel this. I felt the Lord put this on my heart that now I get to complete my bat mitzvah that I never completed, but I get to complete it with Yeshua. And there were many times I wanted to give up because I didn't think what I signed up for would be anything remote to what it, it, I had to endure spiritually and just learning. Um, and it was more of a spiritual growth. And I, I want to dedicate also to Pastor Mike and Lisa Cohen who have really discipled me and kept me going and just taught me everything I need to know and mentored me. And I am so grateful to you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I want to give up so many times, even this week. <laughs> and, I'm, and, and, and I felt the Lord say to me that I am your audience, so you're going to show up. You can't back down. Because there were many things that like, was testing me to like, postpone this. And the, and the dates that we picked, we were, I was looking for January, and for my niece and nephew to make it, there was only two, day, two, one, uh, two weekends that were available. And then when Pastor Mike said that, oh, on this one, though, is the Ten Commandments, I said, oh, that's it, that's it. And then knowing that it was Isaiah being called to be a prophet, and then it was also a Messianic biblical prophecy in Isaiah 9, and then um, we get to also read the New Testament, it, it just felt like, wow, this is such a blessing, such an honor. I'm so honored to be here, uh, even speak with you guys and be here today. So one of the interesting things, well, I'd say that why I got emotional with the, um, my father giving me the Torah 
and even just that that moment with my father looking at him in the eyes and you know being able to even just be here with my parents for the first time at Adat Yeshua and then he said I love you to pastor I just like touched me so much but it it felt like since I've never been married that's another thing you guys know, know about me you <laughs> learned about me is I've never been married so this felt like a anything close to like a marriage ceremony um, I felt like when, when the father gives the bride away, that's how I, I feel. And I felt when he gave me the Torah, and I'm like inscribing the words of, of the Torah, of, of the Lord's words in my heart. And um, walking around, I mean, it, there's just so much spiritual happenings with this, with this process. One of the interesting things that um, I thought was really cool is that we, you see this Moses, <laughs> this is from our home. My parents love Moses. And, <laughs> and they didn't know that I was doing the Ten Commandments at the time, but what's weird is that we had this in the storage for like a few years. And just about a month ago, my mom just asked my dad to bring it home. And I just, it's sitting there. And not an idolizing way, but it was just like, wow, how profound that, Moses is back in our home, and we're all going to, and my mom memorized scripture for the first time. Like, I'm so proud of my mom that she even did that, you participated, so thank you. That's why I brought the Moses up here, because I thought it was so um, in sync with what was going on in my home, and I know the Lord's working on our family, and now fast forward to, like, my testimony, because... <laughs> um, so I grew up very rebellious with Judaism. Just, I, I ended up at probably like around 20, 21, 22, I just start, stopped believing in religion. Um, just didn't believe religion. Was, I thought it was all man-made. I didn't believe in the word of God. I thought that this is all man-made. I thought everything that was told in the, in, the, in the Torah and in the Bible was mythology. It was just stories passed down and, and it wasn't real like Moses parting the Red Sea, like, no, I didn't, I didn't believe that that actually really happened or that any of the miracles really happened. So I went far from Judaism and my roots and tradition and even to the point of, and I repented for this already, but I, on the holiest day, I went on Yom Kippur 15 years ago and I went to In-N-Out and got a hamburger to make it a ritual that I'm never doing this again. I'm not fasting. I'm, not, I'm breaking myself free from Yom Kippur, from all of these traditions and practices. That's how rebellious it went. Um, it made me cringe just celebrating it, like he, he, family inviting me to things, and I just didn't want to be a part of it at all. Never had affinity with Israel. Never understood why, even as a Persian, like why do Persian Jewish people love Israel more than Iran. It was just didn't under I didn't I didn't, never felt that affinity, and I went far into the New Age because I never felt anything spiritual or supernatural in synagogue. There was something I never felt like I felt like there was something missing. So when I went into the New Age and I started feeling things, and I started having supernatural experiences, I went far into super into New Age for about almost 18 years like extreme far, like I studied everything you could think of and I had no idea that this had anything to do with the occult or the, or, or the enemy. And that's how he comes to still kill and destroy because he, he has masqueraded that whole uh, new age into this light, into this, what, you know, ch ch the real truth. And I thought that I had found what we now feel like when we found Yeshua. That's how I felt in the new age. I'm like, I felt closer to God than I ever thought, but I never knew it wasn't real God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So fast forward like about 18, 17, 18 years. This is about 2020. So I'm a new believer. And in 2020, um, December, actually December two, two, 2019, I had one of the darkest moments of my life. I was dealing with anxiety and depression. I was on medication. I just did not find any joy or happiness as much as I tried. And I'm like, here I am working on myself, personal development for about almost 18 years. And how come I still don't feel peace or happiness? How come I've searched for truth and I've searched for truth and I thought I've, I'm, I'm the most connected and spiritual I've ever been. And how come I still feel burdened by darkness? 
to the point that one night in December 2019, I was laying in bed so hopeless. that I pray to God, because I always believed in God. I pray to God, please let me just die in my sleep. Because I don't, I don't, I don't, I really just, that's how, that's how low I was. Never was suicidal, but that was probably the, the most closest thing to like praying for God to just relieve me. Let me just die peacefully in my sleep and not wake up. Six months after that, well, thank you for not answering my prayer. <laughs> but six months after that, um, I was, I was um, searching for truth. Again, I, it, was, it was quarantine. It was 2020. If you guys remember, we're locked up in our homes. I'm watching probably over a thousand YouTube videos in rabbit holes of like politics and trying to find the truth of what's going on in the world. And, and um, I stumble upon, you know, YouTube brings like, um, like suggested videos. And I saw these like um, testimonies of people being saved by Jesus. Now, the Jesus that I knew was the New Age Jesus. So if you didn't know, there's like about 20 other versions of Jesus that are not biblical. And so the New Age has their own version of their Jesus, which is, it's, it's, it's all the lie. It's not the real Jesus. So I was open to anything, like angels, ascended masters. We saw Jesus as a, like, ascended master type figure, not the Son of God, not the Messiah. So... I'm seeing like these testimonies by the biblical Jesus and they're saved and they're healed and these transformations are happening. So at the time I was battling cigarette addiction on top of everything I was going through I was battling a cigarette addiction and marijuana addiction. So um, for those who might know measurements of marijuana, um, it was an ounce of weed a week. So it was a lot. It was literally 24 it's like chain smoking marijuana and chain smoking cigarettes a pack of cigarettes a day and yeah and i thought and that was a lie i told myself that it's helping me it's helping me to like stay calm it's helping me with my anxiety it's helping me to be more creative and it was all lies i knew i didn't want to be addicted but i couldn't i tried one day couldn't even do half a day my mom at the time, she said to me, you know, why don't you please try quitting? Like, please, she was, she was trying to like convince me to quit. I'm like, mom, I can't, you know, I need this. Like, it's helping me. And, and she, she didn't push too much, but it was kind of planting seeds in me. Like, try to quit, try to quit. So after seeing these testimonies on YouTube about people being saved by Jesus, I said, okay, let me just pray. I didn't even know how to pray. And just like a kid probably would pray, I just said, dear Jesus, please take away my addictions to weed, cigarettes, and help me clean my room. Because I really couldn't. I was that immobile. I couldn't even, I had, and I'm a very, I consider myself very neat and organized and clean, but I was that depressed and couldn't even do anything simple as like laundry or clean my room. And I woke up next morning, less than eight hours later, and I had zero cravings. I knew I was touched by a supernatural radical miracle and that my prayers were answered and, and he heard me and he was, it was, it felt like he was just waiting for me to like knock on the door. It's like, cause literally he answered right away, the, like less than eight hours later in my sleep, he delivered me and you don't understand that was impossible for me. There was nothing in my own power or will that like was able to not have a craving anymore that I, to this day, it's been a year and a half, I have not touched or craved or smoked or anything to do with that ever again. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So after that, I became radical. <laughs> People are like, why are you so like, you know, like radical? I'm like, because he radically saved me. <laughs> I mean, when you get touched like that by a miracle, you know, I, I immediately gave my life to the Lord. I said, okay, you know, um, whatever you want me to do, and, and I'm yours. So, fast forward to now here, um, it's been a year and a half I've been saved. I think what's also remarkable is that it was Father's Day when I made that prayer. And I never even saw God as a father figure, but now it's like I call him my father and, and it just, he, he kind of brought that together for me that I'm, I'm God your father. And you prayed on Father's Day and I didn't plan for that. Um, 
So, yeah, he, I'm blown away each and every day um, by his power, by his grace, by his, what he did on the, on the cross for us, that he was our sacrificial lamb. Um, I, as, as a Jewish person, seeing him completing all of the Jewish traditions that I was raised with, Seeing him being the final atonement, our Yom Kippur, I mean, I'm just blown away um, by all the hundreds of biblical messianic prophecies in, the, in our own, in our own uh, Bible that I grew up with that I never saw. And so when I read Isaiah 6 today, and it got me, is because I had that hard heart, and I couldn't see, and I couldn't hear. And, and, and because he saved me and delivered me, he opened up my eyes, he softened my heart, and now all I want to do is be obedient. Like, he's put it on my heart six months ago to study Hebrew and get your adult bat mitzvah. I'm like, okay, uh, all right, let's do this. <laughs> like, I had no plan for I had no idea. It was all Yeshua. He put it in my heart. He put this fire in my heart for Israel that I've never even been there, but now I have this, like, I wish I could live there. It's just this radical, radical change in my heart that he's done um, throughout this time very gracefully. And, and gently, like, like a father, you know? And um, so, yeah, he's uh, brought me here, and I'm so grateful. Thank you, Pastor Michael Brown, for all of your teachings and discipleship as well, and the leadership of Yadat Yeshua, and everybody here, you know, all of you, Virginia, Sarah, Fanny, all the deacons, deaconesses, everybody here that works so hard, Danny, you know, all of you guys in the back, Jeremy, Jose, everyone on tech and worship team. I mean, I could go on and on. Everybody has become so loving and embraceful. This place is truly a, such a humble congregation. The leaders are so humble, and they have a heart for the Lord, and they have just embraced me, and I'm so grateful I'm a new member now. Thank you so much for um, bringing me in officially. And for all that you've done for me to even be here, it's been such an honor. And I just thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for being a part of this memorable um, journey and day um, with the Lord. And I just pray that whoever hears this, whether on the live stream or in the replays, I pray, I pray that this will save souls, this testimony, that will draw people to him, to his kingdom, and that he's glorified through this whole service, uh, even when they watch in the replays. And I just pray it reaches whoever he wants to hear this testimony and really just know that like, I've searched for the truth. I went far, far away, and I did not believe in the commandments. I really thought that it was for old times, it was not for now, and that now all I do want to do is just follow the commandments like I there's, there's like a pure love not a fear for near not a fear of God not like in a way of like punishment not a works way of the Old Testament but in a way of joy and love for the Lord like I really want to do what pleases him and 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 so the Ten Commandments to me is just all about a a consecration now in this bat mitzvah service, a consecration to his word and his commandments. And that he's like, it's a marriage for me. It is. It's taking his Torah and his word and putting it on my heart for all eternity until he comes back. And, and I just thank you all for being here. Um, in Yeshua's name, thank you.